Garden Homestead and we are going to make some chicken soup. But this isn't going to be a fast process because a chicken soup from scratch can take some time. So tonight we're going to start with just getting the chickens in the roaster and then they're going to roast overnight and then tomorrow we'll come back and we can actually take off the meat, take the bones, we'll make the soup and then we're going to boil down the broth, make a really good like homemade chicken broth. And once we've got all of that, we're going to can the soup and the broth in the pressure canner. So stick with me through the whole process and you're going to see from start to finish how to go from, well, this is a turkey, so I guess it's kind of like a turkey and chicken soup, how to go from this to a canned homemade from scratch chicken soup. So let's just jump right into this. So tonight I've got just two little chickens, whoops, two little chickens. We're gonna get them into this roasting pan with just a little bit of water and I'm gonna throw the turkey in there too because what I do is, I need a, I need a knife. What I do is after Thanksgiving each year, I go to the supermarket in my local area and I pick up the turkeys. And these turkeys go for a small fortune Thanksgiving day, but like literally the day after, they'll drop down to like anywhere from 25 cents to 50 cents a pound, which is, and I'm sure most of you know that that's nothing um, for a, a chicken or a turkey. So I do that every year. I pick up a whole bunch of them. I'm just gonna give this thing a, a good wash. I pick up a bunch of them anywhere from four to six, just depending on how much space is in the freezer and how much time I think it's gonna take me before I'm able to kind of get to preserving them. This year didn't, didn't take me very long at all. It's only January, so I was able to get to them pretty, pretty fast, but I do, I do like to just have stuff on the shelves and that way it's, it's just easier, just easier. And I'll do the same thing after St. Patrick's Day. I'll probably grab a couple extra corned beef and uh, a couple extra hams after Easter. So it's, it's awesome. Then of course I'll save the biggest turkey um, for next year's Thanksgiving and then just repeat the process every year. So, although we got lucky this year, my brother-in-law did the turkey and he did a smoked turkey, which first time I've ever had um, a smoked turkey. Oh my God, it, it was undescribable, really, really good. So my guess is that he will be taking over the turkey responsibilities from me on Thanksgiving. My daughter, Harper, you've met Harper. Um, she, she prefers the one that I make because it gets, you know, so roasted for hours and it's got that beautiful crispy skin that she, she really likes and you know, who could blame her? The smoked turkeys don't have that delicious crispy skin, but the meat itself was really, really good. So maybe we'll still do a small one for her so she gets what she wants each year. Yay! So. All right, the let's smallest. get this thing in here. Let's get it washed up. I have a question. Did you just stick your hand in the butt of a chicken? <laughs> yes. Yes, I did. I have to because we want it clean. We don't want to cook a dirty chicken. So glad I not you. <laughs> so glad. Like on thanks before Thanksgiving. Look at that. Uh, before Thanksgiving, when I heard like, oh my god, I'm gonna be digging poop out of a turkey. I'm like, oh, we're not digging. We're not digging poop out of a turkey. We're just cleaning it. We're washing the, okay, the inside of the... In my brain, I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm going to take P.O.P. out. <laughs> um, but no, you do have to wash them because you want it to be clean. Because even the, the broth, we're going we're gonna to can the broth to make homemade chicken stock. Okay. Which is really, really good. So we want to make sure that our meat it's super, super clean before we before we do that. That's all. This looks really, well, I mean, obviously, like, not edible yet, but, like, 
I love turkey. And turkey's pretty good for you. It's actually healthier for you than chicken. It's got better iron content. And when you so. cook it like Ooh. my mom cooks it, it tastes Ooh. better than chicken. Okay. I call the leg next year. So we got two little chickens in there, one good sized turkey. Um, mom, and we're something. gonna throw that on the roaster. We're gonna let it roast overnight. It's all gonna break down. And when we reach the point where it kind of like pulls apart and the meat is falling off the bone, I'll turn it off and then I'll sort through it and save the meat and the bones off to one side. Okay. So let me um, let me get to that and then we'll circle back and we'll catch up tomorrow and we'll get started. Hey everyone, Heather here from Garden Homestead. We got started last night on the from scratch chicken soup. We got the chickens and the turkey in the roaster. They slow roasted overnight. So now we're gonna start breaking them down and then we'll move into preparing the celery and carrots and onions to go with it. So this is a very basic recipe. And the reason for that is I'm going to pressure can this. So I am going to follow the ball book because this is the pressure canning and canning Bible. So I'm not gonna deviate from what they're recommending because I wanna be sure that this is indeed shelf stable. So let's, um, let's get to the, <laughs> the breaking down of the carcasses. But for those of you who want to be able to reference the recipe that I'm using, it's on page 404. So very basic chicken soup, but it's going to be fantastic. All right, let's see what we got going on here. So what I did is I've got, well, wow, these look great. I've got two little chickens and a turkey in here. What I often do, and I do this constantly with my carcasses, uh, I really do like just having the option of making like my own um, my own broths and stuff. And so I pull out the bones, kind of just break it down, make sure there's no like little surprise ones in there that I won't see. And I don't separate dark and white meat. I don't care. I do pull off and save all the bones and the skin and all of that though, because it's gonna make a fantastic stock. And I'm making a stock as well. So. This is kind of a two for one situation we got going on. I'm gonna make some chicken soup, but I'm gonna have that on the shelf. But I'm also gonna then boil down and cook down, more than boil, cook down, the um, the bones and the, the extras that I wouldn't want in my soup so that I've got some great stock on hand. Because I think I'm just about out of stocks. I may even have to use, um, store-bought sock for this soup because I don't think I want to wait to make the actual soup for homemade stock. So I might just use some, some store-bought sock. My preferred way to do this is I will roast them overnight and then I will let them sit for a few hours and cool off before I start breaking them down. I don't let them get cold because then they're harder to break down. But if you try to do it when they're too warm, you're going to just completely burn off your fingers. So let them cool a bit. That way you can just do it easy. And if they're still a little bit warm, you know, I might save some of these really nice chunks and pressure can some chicken too. So I think I'm going to set, let me, let me grab one more bowl. Because I also could can some just straight nice chicken. And some of these are some really good chucks. So it might be nice just to have some ch chicken canned on the shelves as well. Especially some of these nice big chucks. These are, those are good. I can hear my children making a bunch of noise in the background over there. Hey Dawson, why don't you sit down and watch your movie quietly, please? Yeah, these are beautiful just chunks of breast meat that will be great to throw throw in some jars to have on the shelf. Um, and I'm not, I mean, I did three. I did a turkey and two chickens, so there's certainly no shortage of meat for the soup. So I'm not worried about pulling some aside to throw some in cans. And I'm pressure canning anyway, so I might as well, might as well do some straight chicken as well. 
Watch for those little bones somewhere. Sometimes they're sneaky and they hide in there. You're pretty safe with the, the breast meat, but the other spots you gotta just, especially when you roast it, things break down. You gotta be careful not to, not to have little bones hiding in the meat because you don't, you don't want anybody choking on bones. <laughs> and they do, they, they hide. So I tend to do this a lot by feel. Because you can feel them more easily than you can see them. Like this, I'm going to use this chunk for stock. Because there's a lot of little bones in there. I can feel them. That piece is okay. That piece is okay. Hey, the pieces that just won't look nice or taste nice in an actual soup, we're just going to throw off to the side. We'll use them. We'll use them in the stock. They'll be great in stock. Like some of these got a little over seared. So you pull off the part of the meat that's good, save that little dried up spot, throw that over there for stock. Like I said, use your hands. Your hands won't fail you. They will feel a bone. Keep an eye out for little chunks of cartilage. Cartilage will feel soft, but it'll also feel like jelly. And you don't want cartilage in your soups either, so. Here we go. We're ready for the next chunk. And I do tend to, you probably can't see it well, but once I've sorted through things and I know there's no cartilage or bone in there, I just push it off to the side and then I can move on to the next, the next spot without having to worry about like repeating what I've already sort of looked through already. There's a little teeny bone. See, some of them are nice and small, but you'll miss them if you're not paying attention. I do like how easy this is. I think it sounds cumbersome and it sounds like a very hard thing to do, like breaking down your own your own carcasses for me. It it's surprisingly easy and the meat's usually very, very tender. The dog is like losing his mind over here next to me. He is not getting any, regardless of what he thinks. It's not happening for him. But yeah, this is, I'm almost done with that whole first chicken. So this is a very, very easy, easy thing to do. And it renders great, great meat. And because you roasted it, you end up with a really nice, like natural sauce. That'll get you started on a great, a great broth. So you guys don't have to watch me do the whole thing. Maybe we'll break into the turkey here in a second. But we'll kind of just get through some just so you can see how how easy it is. I can't overemphasize enough. Do it by touch. If you depend on your eyes to get this right, you, they will they will throw you off. And there we go. There's the first chickens down. So let's pull. I might actually just save the turkey legs because they're big and my kids do love turkey legs. So maybe we'll just pull those off to the side. Let's grab the main chunk of this carcass here. Throw out that little thing. Save a couple little pieces of that meat. And once you see somebody do this, it becomes, you know, very, it, it becomes more approachable, right? Where I, I regularly have people say to me, like, you do what? Because every year after Thanksgiving, I always do this with my, my turkey carcasses because it really only, the longest part is the roasting. It doesn't take long to actually do the breaking down. And then with the, you can just pull the carcass right in half, super, super easy. There's your wishbone. Bones are falling, falling right out. Nothing challenging and nothing special about what I'm doing here. This is easy stuff. Peel off the skin. The skin will be great for your stocks. A little piece right there. I don't want it in my soup, but it will add great flavor for the stock. Um, that's a good piece of meat there. And I think I'm going to save a good chunk of this breast for canning. Like I said, I may, 
and maybe can a good chunk of meat and then just use the little little pieces for the soup. Because I don't need tons and tons and tons of chicken soup. Just enough. Uh, nice big bone there. There we go, there's another big, nice chunk. That's some skin, let's get the skin out of there. And these kind of pieces lend themselves great to soup. There's bone. So that's why I don't, I'm not worried about saving those big breast pieces for canned meat. There will be plenty. And I've also got tons of carrots and celery to throw in the soup as well. I am not doing potatoes even though in my soul I want to. They are not in the book, the ball book, as part of the recipe and I don't want to risk changing the parameters because it's just not worth it to possibly have something that's not safe, right? So I am going to omit them and then as we pull the jars off the shelf, if we want to add some noodles or potatoes, we'll do it, we'll do it then. The benefit of having it canned is just the, the hardest part of it will already be done, but the most important piece of it is that it is safe to eat. So we are going to skip the potatoes and go exactly based off of what Ball is recommending because they tested their recipes, so we know those ones are safe bone there. We're going to save most of that for the soup. Here we go. See, this is a whole turkey. Look how fast this is. This takes no time at all. It sounds harder than it is, I promise. After you've done it a few times, it becomes very, very easy because you know what you're looking for. Nice big chunk. We're gonna save that. Use that for canned meat. And a little bone. Let's do this stuff for stock. All right. Moving on to the next one. Pull off a little wing. Just pull out the nice chunks of meat that are super easy to work with. Any bones and skin, throw them aside. They'll make great stock. There we go. This out of the way so you can see what I'm doing a little bit here. And well, this nice crispy skin. I bet Harper would love this, actually. Hey, Harper. Yeah. There's a crispy chicken skin over here. She loves the skin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then you got most of them that roasted did, didn't roast crispy like this one, but don't, don't get it all over yourself, okay? But there's a nice crispy one. Maybe a plate would be great. I think you'll have to get a piece from Harper. I just gave Harper the crispy skin. Okay, at the table, guys. I don't know what the taste is. Is it healthy? It, I mean, there's less healthy things. Yeah. Harper, table. Oh, you're done. Wow, that was fast. That was fast. All right, I'm going to take all of this less appealing meat, put it in here. Just because, like I said, I don't, dark meat doesn't bother me, but it might bother my children appearance wise. So we're just going to omit that and use it for stock. Piece right there, that's good. A couple little slices right here. That was a good one. All right, I'll finish this up. You guys don't have to watch me do it. So we finished <laughs> up not separating the meat from the bones. I put the bones and the skin and all the, the extra stuff back in the roaster. I'm gonna add some water. I'm gonna fill it just about to the top with water and I'm gonna let that just 
keep cooking for probably another like 24 hours and then I'll can that likely tomorrow. Um, this meat I'm just going to set aside for now while I start prepping the carrots and the celery and the onions and then we'll get those into a pot and get, start getting those ready to can as well. So let's throw some water in the roaster and then we'll fire this up after we've washed up some carrots. This is going to make a very good broth. I'm probably going to throw some like bay leaves in there too. I might, I might also toss in some like thyme and rosemary. Let's just, let's see what I have on hand. Just to add a little extra like herbs, Whoops. herb flavor to it. Just cause I, I like, oh, you know what else? I'm gonna put some mushrooms in there too. I grow my own mushrooms and I've got some that I pulled out of the freezer. So we'll put those in as well just to add a little bit of extra like nutrients to the to the broth. I have no shortage of mushrooms, so I don't I don't mind using them for this purpose. I have tubs. And they're very, very good for you. They have a lot of health benefits. So the ones I grow, um, they're not a medicinal mushroom, they're wine packs. They're just, they're just very easy to cultivate, so that's kind of why I lead to that. They look a lot like portobellas. They have a similar flavor, just more mild. But I do, I do have a bunch that I pulled out of the freezer the other night. So let's throw those in here too. Maybe one more. Let's see how full I can get this. It takes so long to make that I wanna I wanna have plenty when this is all said and done. So I feel like adding more water is better than less. And you can really just never have too much homemade broth. Like I said, you'll run out. There we go. That is beautiful. Beautiful. All right, let me grab the mushrooms. Guess I'm gonna cut them open. And I'm just gonna throw these in. These are just ones that I harvested back in the fall. Pulled them out of the freezer the other night. I don't even remember what I was gonna use them for, but. Is, you know what, this might be mataki. I think this is mataki. I don't think these are wine caps. Oh, that's very cool. So mataki are an incredibly um, healthy mushroom. And they have an amazing like wild flavor to them. So I do, I forage for mushrooms in the fall. And I think these are mataki. I'm very sure they're mataki. These are not wine caps. There's not a good one to like show you what they look like by any means. And they have a lot of water in them from being frozen, but oh, these will be, these will be fantastic in a, a soup stock. So yeah, as soon as I got the bag open, I thought I had pulled wine caps, but these are, these are definitely mataki. Also known as um, Hind of the Woods or Ram's Head or Sheep's Head. I, I tend to call them mataki, but this is, 100% mataki. Okay, those will be amazing. That's an amazing addition to the broth. I think my hands a little washed. What a nice surprise. Well, I knew I had foraged tons of them this fall. I ate like eight pounds of them, but everything I couldn't eat, I either freeze dried, dehydrated, or froze when everything else was full. Because, you know, you can only get them that one time a year. You have to know where to find them and you have to know how to identify them which fortunately I do. So that time of year, I am, I am in the woods looking for mushrooms. That's just where I am in the fall. I spend a lot of my summer there too, to be honest with you, because there's different varieties available different times of year. You gotta know where to go and what you're looking for. You certainly don't you know, wanna go wandering around the forest just eating random mushrooms. That would be a terrible idea. It can be very dangerous. There are a lot of poisonous ones out there. So be very sure, <laughs> be very, very, very sure 
that you know what you're doing. Um, and fortunately for me, I do. So let me grab some rosemary and some thyme. And I think we'll throw those in too. This is gonna be a fantastic broth. I'm very excited about this one. I'm also gonna throw in some parsley. I do grow a lot of my own herbs and I do have homegrown parsley, but honestly, I don't wanna make you guys wait while I go down to um, the freeze dryer storage and pull it out. So I'm gonna use the store-bought stuff because it's right here. This is some thyme. And rosemary. This will be amazing. Okay, fantastic. I'm gonna give that a quick stir. And then we're gonna plug it back in and let it get back to roasting. And once that's roasting again, we, it already smells good. Yum. You know what else? Salt and pepper. Let's also do some salt and pepper. Just before I go to Rogue, because I do want to can this, let's just take a quick second and make sure that I didn't put anything in here that I'm not supposed to put into a chicken stock. Let's see what it says. It says I can do celery, but you know, maybe I'll throw some celery in there. I have plenty. Bay leaves, salt, pepper, onions. You know, I could throw some onions in. I have some already. And the other herbs won't hurt. Mushrooms shouldn't hurt at all. Let's just check. Be sure. <laughs> so when I do the stock, I'm only going to actually can the broth. All the stuff that I put in, I will sift out. So vegetable stocks, tomatoes, peppers, all kinds of stuff. Okay, I don't see anything I've put in here that should be a cause for concern. And I know you can can mushrooms. So I'm not super worried about those either. Although I don't see them. I know they are in the book. I generally do not can my mushrooms. I prefer them freeze dried. Here we go, cultivated mushrooms. Hot pack. Combine with water, five minutes, blah, 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 blah. Okay, 45 minutes. Okay, so to do with cultivated mushrooms, which are mushrooms you grew, these are not, these are wild mushrooms. Had they been the wine caps, those would have been cultivated, but these are wild. Um, but it only calls for 45 minutes for a pint. I'm going to be canning in quarts at 90 minutes, so I'm comfortable with what I'm doing. I'm not worried about that. All right, let's plug that bad boy in and let's get started on some carrots. Let's actually throw some celery and onions in as well. All right, these are some leftover onions that I cooked last night. So let's put a nice healthy chunk of those in. I might just put them all in, why not? They're just caramelized, so they're not raw, but they're gonna add a nice caramelized flavor. I think once we dice some of the carrots, I'll probably throw those in as well. Just because, yes, yeah, some of this... No, I'm not going to use any of this for the soup, am I? Because I don't want to wait, because I want to be impatient. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, because some of this celery will go in the soup, is I will take the parts that I wouldn't use in a soup, the extras, and I'm going to put them in this broth. So let's give this stuff a squash. I already got the carrot squashing. But we're gonna get some celery in there too, I think, because it will give everything a really nice flavor. I do need a knife. 
Let's push this bad boy out of the way. Oh, that's heavy now. <laughs> Let's get this out of the way, just a hair. Grab a knife. And all the knives I have, I would have thought there would be one a little handier than that. This will work perfectly. All right, so this is a perfect spot. We'll throw that in. I'm gonna throw this one in. And then all these like leaves and baloney, it's not gonna hurt anything. We'll throw those in. We don't want this part in our soup, but they are perfect for a stock. And then we'll just push those aside and put that in there. <laughs> There we go, look at that. Okay, all right. So the celery is already washed, Mrs. Butt. You now you can see why I like to do it so close to the, uh, the sink. So this thing, I love. And it's already got the blades and stuff in there right now, so I'm gonna lock it in place Turn it on. I'll keep it low so it's not too distracting for you guys. But it's pretty much is gonna make you know it's gonna make my job here very easy. I won't make you guys watch me do all of them. And if you're in a hurry, it will go faster. This will make very quick work of the things that need to be like sliced and diced. So can you do it the old fashioned way? Yes. Will it work just as well? Yep. Just depends on how much time you're willing to dedicate to it. I quite often have one of the kids help me with this part of it. So it's, it's pretty common that when I'm making things, they like to do the part that I'm doing right now and then I can just kind of keep going with the other stuff. So they're, they're relaxing. Watching a little, I think, Paw Patrol or something right now. Which is fine. They, they clean the house. They had dance all morning, so it's okay if they want to relax for a while. All right, finish this one, I'll show you how I clean up carrots because it's probably not what you're expecting. And then I'll do the rest of this just without you guys having to like wait for me. But let's get that one. Don't ever stick your fingers in here. It's a good way to lose a finger. Okay, so that took merely minutes, which is awesome. All right, so let's talk about carrots because you're probably expecting me to say that I'm gonna peel all of these carrots. I am not. I am not. So I have a veggie cloth and basically it's just a little bit scrubby on one side and instead of peeling them, you use this cloth to kind of just rub off the outer skin. And you would be surprised not only at how well it works, but how fast it is and how much of your carrots you don't end up wasting, where I feel like if I use a peeler, which for things like, you know, actually, I don't even always do it with potatoes, to be honest with you. I feel like you end up wasting so much of your produce where this works really, really well. This is one of my, my favorites, to be honest with you. A little quick little wash. Oops. I don't know if you can see, but Huge different. This looks like it was peeled, but it wasn't. And then you can move right back on to dicing things. So I've got a lot of carrots to do and a lot of celery to do. So I'm gonna knock out some of these. I'm gonna put all these extra like random little tops and ends in the broth. I'll do one more just for good measure. 
so you guys can see. And then I'll, I'll take care of these and we can kind of circle back when it comes time to. All right, we're back and I've got Harper here with me. She's gonna help me do some of the assembling of the soup. So she's gonna walk you through what she's putting in. Here's your recipe book, kiddo. Okay. We're following this recipe right here. Okay. Well, I diced the onion, so I'm just gonna push this out of the way just a little bit. Hi, you might know me from Garden Homestead with making mini pumpkin muffins with three, with three cheese inside them. That was literally just yesterday. <laughs> we all love them, but my brother likes the ones that didn't get any in them. I don't know how that happened. Yeah, that, I don't know how that happened either. Apparently we missed putting uh, okay. cream cheese in one of them. That was his favorite, of course. So you're going to follow this recipe right here. Okay. I don't know what that says. Go, that says chicken stock. So we are cheating and we are using store-bought stocks because I don't want to wait for the, the other one to cook. And we are out. So we're cheating just a little bit. So do, do I do... Um, Three cups, two cups, one cup. So it says 16 cups. 16? 16 cups. Oh so you've got three different kinds of broth there. So just rotate. Do like one of this one and one of that one and one I, of the other one. I was, I was saying like those are the same, so I'm just going to use all of them. There, well, leave your book right here because you're going to need it to know what comes up next. Yeah, I don't have to. I'm trying to leave it so I don't have, so I have enough space. Okay. Well, we'll put it right here. Don't mind the TV. So we were just watching TV, and my mom called me up. She really wanted anybody full cups? Yep, three or sixteen full cups. Yeah, she helped me dice up the rest of the carrots. So I washed them. She diced them. It was fun. This works out really good. One and we got fifteen to go. All right. So I just did this one. And do this. So we've got a combination going. I've got mushroom broth. Clearly I like mushrooms. Yeah, she we've got it. bone broth and I think a low sodium chicken broth. And that's just to kind of create more depth in the flavor. I'm not a huge chicken broth fan unless it's been kind of doctored up to make it really good and earthy. So because I'm cheating and I'm using store-bought stuff, I've, I've mixed in a few things. Yeah, you really are cheating. I am cheating. This, uh, is, this is totally cheating. I wouldn't call it cheating. I would just calling it, you don't have the broth already made, so you needed to. Yeah. This is only my fourth cup. Good, don't lose count. We don't want to repeat the, the cream incident. <laughs> I know. That, we don't want that incident. It actually would be, it'll be fine. We'll make it work. It'll be, it'll be great. I'm going to not distract you. I'm going to let you do you for a few minutes. I'm counting in my head. Don't mind me. Perfect. Got ten more. So this does not call for garlic, and I like garlic, so, but it does say we can use a bouillon, so we're going to use the rest of my like better than bouillon roasted garlic base. I only have a little bit left anyway, so we're going to just use it. Then, okay. I like to go rogue when I cook. So I have to remember when I can, I can't go wrong. You gotta follow the recipe so you make sure you don't poison anybody. <laughs> I go a little I go a little rogue on like jams and jellies because you can't you can't really go wrong there. But when it comes to doing things with like meats, I don't mess around. I do what the book tells me to do. And most of the time, I'm very happy with the recipes. There's been a couple that I wasn't crazy about. Um, which ones did I make that I kind of hated? 
there was one that came from this book too. I'm sure I wrote it down. I've got notes all over my book. But there was one in here that I, I did not appreciate. And I think I said like, don't ever make this again. But most of the time it was a chili. It was like the grandma's chili one or something. It was terrible. I'm gonna find it while she mixes this up so I can tell you guys. Because Noelle wanted chili. And I used this book to can some. And it was Grandma's Chili Sauce. Very sweet and vinegar flavored. Gross. Tastes pickled. <laughs> so, unless you like your chili sauce to have like a pickled flavor, don't use the Grandma's Chili Sauce. Mom, don't. I did not like it. I will never repeat that one. Mom, we don't have exactly 16 because we have like 15. Okay, are we out of broth? Oh, um, yeah, we're out of broth. That's okay, we'll make it work. We have a, a little more in each thing, so I guess I'll just... That's okay. I'm not going to worry about it. We can work with that. So next is three cups of chicken. So that's... Barely. That's okay, that's fine. You're doing great. Alright, take this, fill that three times, put it in here. I'll get rid of your containers for you. Okay. Ugh. Two left. There you go. <laughs> What's next after chicken? Celery, carrots, and onions. Okay. I can dump those in. Okay. This is all you. Nice. All right, so you're going to have to use the cup, so you want a cup and a half of each. Cup and a half. These two are mixed together. I know, I didn't think that all the way through when I was dicing them. So take a cup of the carrots. The dog's back. Dog, you better not eat any. <laughs> I'm saying so, that to dog, but I'm doing exactly that. We, we love, careful, we love Belgian Balaglas. They're a fantastic breed. He's amazing, but he is counter height. So it is very easy for his nose to sort of graze the counters and just like suck things up. So we gotta watch him like a hawk. And he's clever enough to like wait till somebody's not paying attention. Can you pay attention and not watch TV? <laughs> or if you wanna watch TV, go watch TV and I'll do this. But they don't wanna watch you watch TV. Sorry. I put on my favorite movie. <laughs> now I know why I shouldn't do that while cooking. Mm-hmm. That's a half a cup. It's, it says a cup and a half. Oh, you did one already? I did one. Of celery? Of carrots. Okay. You need a cup and a half of carrots, a cup and a half of celery. Is this? That's not a full cup. I would do a full cup. Why did you have to put the celery on the bottom? I don't know. I just sliced the celery first. Do you want me to help you? No, thank you. I'll tell you what. While you do that, I'm going to ballpark that this is about a cup of onions. Mm. Once you've been cooking long enough, you can, you can ballpark it and probably be pretty close to right. And just because, why not? I'm going to throw in the rest of them too. All right. Are you good with what you've got going on? You're eating more than you're cooking. I'm done. You're done. You put all. You did a cup and a half of each. Are you sure? Just do it anyway. Okay. So now you gotta squirt in some salt and pepper, and that's everything. That seems like a very basic soup, but that's okay. It'll still be great to have on the shelves. Are we going to what? Another after this. Oh yeah. We got a lot to go. We're going to get this pot going first. You got enough in there? No, I need like another video. Oh, I have no idea. Here, why don't we turn it the way it grinds out. 
All right, grab that spoon, give it a mix. We're gonna pop it on the stove. Yeah. So according to the ball book, it says this needs to cook for 30 minutes, if I remember correctly. Let's see. Uh, combine chicken stock, chicken, celery, onions, carrots, da da da. Boil over medium heat. Reduce. Boil gently for 30 minutes. And then it says to add salt and pepper later, but it's fine. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna boil it for 30 minutes. I won't make you watch that process, but then once we get to the 30 minute point, it says to ladle it into hot jars, leaving one inch of headspace. Remove the air bubbles. Um, and then wipe the rim with a vinegar towel. This is standard stuff, right? Okay. And then we will tighten finger tight. I'll walk you back through all of this when we get there. But for now, we're just going to bring this to a boil. Boil it for 30 minutes and we'll circle back. All right, see you in a bit. Bye. We'll see you in like, like months later. <laughs> all right, everyone, we're back. It is time to can up this soup. We're gonna do quart jars. I got two filled up already. We got two more to do together. I felt like pints just wasn't quite big enough. So we're gonna do quarts today. So what I did was I let this soup reach a boiling point. I did a nice low boil for 30 minutes. Hopefully I've got enough to get full four quarts out of here. Should. These jars are warm. I didn't, I don't have them hot. I probably should have. So I'm, I'm being a little, I'm flirting on the risky side today. Hopefully I don't break a jar. But I didn't want to have boiling hot jars to try and handle those either. So. so I do usually do nice hot jars. So I would recommend, I might have to do one pint. I would recommend measuring this. I'm gonna eyeball it, because I'm pretty comfortable with what I'm doing. I'll go get a pint jar um, when we're done together, because I've got just enough left for a pint, I think. But after you've got your jar filled, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a paper towel with some white vinegar. I've got it pre-wetened, or pre-moistened. You're gonna wipe the rim and get that rim nice and clean. And that's important because if you don't do this, you're risking getting a bad seal. And you don't want that because we are, we are making these shelf stable for a while. So we want to make sure our seals are, are good. Get them nice and clean. Take your covers. Take them. Oops. We've got mix, mix and match over here. So I've got a couple wide mouths and then a regular finger tight. Do not over tighten these. Put them on. Finger tight. Woo, they're hot now. <laughs> okay. Just tight enough. Where's my towel? So they make a special tool for lowering these into your canner. I'm not going to use it. I'm just going to use a towel. Put them right in your canner. I don't have enough jars to fill the canner, but I'm not going to wait because they're already hot and I don't want to wait too long. So what I've got is just some water here. I'm going to fill it. There's a measuring line in here. It's usually about three quarts. That should be perfect, actually. Put that in there. I am going to put a little bit of vinegar in here just to keep my jars nice and clean. That's all she wrote. I will do the pint too, but otherwise, oops, lock down your pressure canner. Don't put your weight on yet. It's too early for the weights. You're going to turn it up so that it reaches a full boil. Once this vents steam, you want a steady vent of steady stream vent for 10 full minutes, okay? So set a timer once you see a steady stream coming out, let it go for 10 minutes. Once it's been going for 10 minutes, then you can put on your weight. So mine has this gauge as well. I, I don't use this gauge, I use this, the jiggler. Um, so I've got this set here. And then this is going to go, once this starts rocking, 
I'm gonna let it rock for 90 minutes, okay? So I use this as kind of a backup, but I, I just don't like this as much as I like the mechanical. And after 90 minutes, I'm gonna turn the heat off. I'm gonna let it depressurize on its own. And then once it does, I'll open it up and they will be shelf stable. So pretty easy thing to do. I absolutely love this. I know pressure canners can be a little scary, but honestly, they, they're not as scary as you think they are. Um, especially when you think about the fact that like, if you're using a mechanical weight, you know when it's hit that pressure point, and then this thing will lock in place. And these newer ones have this little gauge on the back where if they were to overpressurize, this will pop and it will bend. So the idea that these things might explode on you is pretty unlikely. So I do love mine. So hopefully this is inspiring for you. It's a great, easy way. Like I said, this is a super simple, chicken soup recipe it's straight out of the ball book i love this and i just love having things on the shelves that we can grab and, and it's easy to do so hope you liked it bit of a longer video for you guys but if you did like it please subscribe hit the notification bell like the videos that way we can keep more videos coming at you until next time this is heather from garden homestead